Welcome. I am Eric with Mother.com and I greet you, beloveds, in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. So with about 40 minutes to go before the end of this week's action, this is how your markets are shaping up to close the end of the week, give or take. And we'll see where we close. And also let me give you a quick snapshot of where Ethereum and Bitcoin are trading right now. There is Ethereum and Bitcoin down about 2% for the day for Ethereum and Bitcoin. All right, let's begin with the NASDAQ. And for the week, generally, depending on where we close, NASDAQ is down about 2% for the week. For the week, we can see that the S&P 500 is currently down about 1.4% down for the week. The Dow is down the least, down about 1.2% for the entire week. Today I'm going to take a look at the Nasdaq hourly. Usually I don't go to this hourly and smaller time frames, but I think they give us a little bit of a good educational standpoint, especially we can see here at the highs of Wednesday's action, the market was looking like it was really on a nice uptrend, but has since reversed since that Wednesday one day move higher and we can see that on this hourly chart for the nasdaq if we take the highs of the rsi and draw a simple trend line we see that this is where exactly the market did tag this top side line here corresponding with these highs and the nasdaq has pulled back since then it also happens to coincide with this prior break here that break coming off the highs and we can take that and draw our uniformity line and this one gave us the previous highs so from an educational standpoint we can see that by tracking some of these things here we can see that market gives us visual cues as to what to anticipate especially where a market is tagging resistance don't be surprised as we see this past two weeks that the market's been coming back to these top side lines and finding resistance. There's also another way that I can suggest here. And again, I'm just doing this from an educational standpoint is if you take this line here and draw it connecting the prior highs there, what you get is an entry in the market or a breakout of sorts, which is here which is this entry and of course after that entry the market did have a nice move to fresh all-time highs so what we're gonna do is extend that red line a search and now you can see in fact I might need to take a, take off or let me take off those other lines so we can all see this clearly See what I'm getting at here. Notice what happens when we break below the line here. This warning drop. We are rejected here for those highs. Target here again. And this week, the same line turned into resistance. And for now, to be relevant, we can see that even as the market was dropping this Friday, we still haven't broken this trend line here. A simple trend line connecting recent RSI lows has yet to break. Hence, the NASDAQ did not drop as much this past, this very Friday. Of course, it's going to need a break of this RSI lows trend line for the market to entertain lower prices as far as the NASDAQ is concerned. And as I I'm recording this again the Nasdaq still for the day before we close here still doing its best to stay positive right there by the way even on the 30 minute chart for the Nasdaq we see a good explanation visually why we get this stop here and it is a simple line again connecting the tops 
you see how we came and tagged this at the highs of this week. The highs right there into a day. It also happens to match up very well again to the recent break of the RSI again using my uniformity concept. We break this trend line here. Coming off that short term high, take that break point and draw it, draw a straight line. So let's do that right there. And again, we see the market did tag the same line at the highs of this midweek. Now, what I would propose is happening here with the NASDAQ, NASDAQ doing its best to hold. We can see that there's a lows line on the 30 minute chart that has yet to break down. So I would say if there's going to be a, a bigger drop in the market, this would have to break. Otherwise, right now, the NASDAQ is doing its best impression to hold and stabilize. Now, we can also say from a 30 minute point of view or from a closer point of view, we can say the NASDAQ came and tagged the lows of September. So again, the lows of September, excuse me, December, lows of December here were tagged on Friday right there and that held. So as long as we are seeing prices hold exactly where they need to find support, which are recent intraday lows for the month of December, then, then the NASDAQ is doing its best impression to find support and build to the upside. Otherwise, this is still playing out and something we need to continue monitoring because a break of this area here does suggest that the market now has a bigger appetite for lower prices. Which brings me back to the NASDAQ two year weekly chart. So two years of weekly data and something we talked about last weekend. And I'm going to talk about this again because it's still relevant is this area here. Where we move out of a range. And this is going back to early 2020. This movement here successful because the market hasn't been back to that level yet since then so take that rsi level and draw a straight line this happens to be essentially around rsi 50 on the weekly and we've come close to this line a couple times where the market bounced all of this was successful support areas for the market during pullbacks over the last one and a half years plus and here we are again so definitely something to watch here if the market is to stabilize and be sideways then it's gonna need the rsi to bounce back above rsi 50. and at the same time as we go into the new week should we break below this RSI 50 level, then for sure the market is going to be now entertaining much lower prices. Now, don't forget, there's also another scenario that is important, and it is the monthly chart for the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ essentially has been above 69.1 since October of 2020. So above 69.1 since October, November of 2020. So more than one year ago. And as long as the NASDAQ is holding above the threshold or above 69.1, this is still a very bullish market. And yes, you're gonna get pullbacks in this phase where the RSI is above 69.1. But for there to be a true sell-off, the NASDAQ would have to drop and stay below 69.1 and whenever it drops below 69.1 expect the market to trade with a heavy bias to the downside now there's another instrument that is also very close to dropping below rsi 69.1 and it is ethereum 
So right now, Ethereum is trading with its monthly RSI at about 69, let's say 0.8. And this is fine as long as the RSI is above 69.1. But as we start seeing here, more and more the cryptos are testing lower and lower prices. If Ethereum drops below 69.1 and stays below 69.1, I would anticipate that there's going to be a bigger drop in the entire crypto landscape. And this would also potentially be what the NASDAQ would also be doing. So if the crypto sector of the market and if the general market is to hold and stabilize around here, then the NASDAQ and Ethereum need to hold their monthly RSIs above 69.1 below 69.1 for either the nasdaq or ethereum and you are going to see a fast-paced drop in prices by the way at the end of last week the s p 500 was essentially breaking out but we can see this week that breakout has failed and so we can see that that is already a red flag for the S&P 500 as long as it stays below 4697.96 which is the weekly closing high from the month of November so right now we are below this price so we can see the S&P 500 is already giving us a short term red flag and now the possibility of lower prices is also there. But now one thing we can also do is watch the recent monthly closing or weekly closing low. So the recent weekly closing low from the month of November. We need to watch that price level because if the S&P 500 drops below it, that's going to be a second red flag. And that level to watch there is 4.5. 38.43 a drop below that price is going to be the second red flag and is really going to be setting the stage for a continued push down in the market also just like the nasdaq this line here can be used which is what we can see here as the breakout level if we draw it this way so this breakout level here began this move off june july time period this breakout here of course the market hasn't been back to that level once it cleared this area so we take that rsi level and draw it as search and again just like i explained with the nasdaq we can see that every time we bounce or we go below the line and back above it with uniform action like we did in late October, early November of 2020. We tagged it here again recently. And now we tagged it here over the last couple of weeks. So as long as we are above the blue line, then the S&P 500 is still sideways, but not broken. It's going to take a break of this trend line here to really press markets down. So from this weekly chart, not broken, but could, could eventually break down. So we can watch this price level as a line on the sand in the short term, because a break of this area here, which is the recent weekly closing low from the month of November, a break below this line would really set the stage for markets seeking lower price levels. Now, let's not forget that on the monthly, S&P 500 is still breaking out. In other words, it is still above October's monthly closing high. So it is still breaking out technically because it is above that breakout level. And so bulls can be encouraged that as long as the S&P 500 is holding above 4.6 or 5.38, which is the monthly closing high from October, then this is still a good market.
Keep in mind, S&P 500 continues to hold its monthly RSI above 69.1. So the monthly still looks good as far as the S&P 500 is concerned. Now, of course, if we observe in the coming days, weeks, that this is broken to the downside, then we can start seeing more and more that the picture is turning more and more bearish. And especially if the RSI drops below 69.1, whenever it does, that would also be painting a picture that the market could just be ready for a leg down. And I mean a serious leg down. Speaking of monthly breakouts, the Dow is now back below. So at some point in this month, December, it was breaking out. But now we are back below the breakout level, which is the monthly closing high from October. And for the Dow, that level is 35819.56. Again, this is the monthly closing high from October, and we are below that price. So we can say that as long as we are unable to break out, then we are seeing more and more visual signs that the market is running out of upside momentum. So, we keep monitoring the Dow. The more it stays and the more it drifts farther away from this point, the more it means the breakout has officially failed and we shouldn't be surprised that the market is more and more entertaining lower prices. Now, on the daily for the Dow, we can see where it's been struggling. So, it starts off here. And this week we came and hit that level twice. So from this break in November of the highs there, we've tagged this twice since then. So that's one reason for the pullback. Also the Dow seeing a little bit of a expanded down day about 1.2% 1, 1 because the RSI is dropping below 50. So whenever you drop below 50, you tend to have a multi-percent down day and you tend to close towards session lows. Now, this chart in a way gives us a good understanding of the market. We are essentially around the 50-day moving average. So really, we can't write too much about the next trend because we are trading around the 50-day moving average. Hard to decide which way the market is going if you consider the 50-day moving average alone. Now, on the four hourly, again, just touching on this again, because it's a good educational point to observe here. We see where we break down here on the four hourly. And this week we tagged it twice during the highs of the week and the market was rejected. Now, speaking of monthly charts, the Canadian market also, similar to the Dow, is pulling back from a breakout attempt in the month of December. So far, there was a breakout attempt that is now failing or struggling. And so as long as that breakout cannot be successful, in other words, if it is unable to hold above 21037, this is a Canadian market, of course. 0 0.07, which is again the month of October's monthly closing high. So if we are unable to clear this number, also let's not forget that the RSI is back below 69.1. So net net, the failed price breakout and the RSI not able to reclaim 69.1 and you start getting the look that maybe just maybe we are starting to roll over on the monthly charts for some of these major indices now to correct this you'd want to see the rsi back above 69.1 and you'd like to see the breakout be successful above the monthly closing high of october Otherwise, right now, it looks like things are pointing to a sideways to down market as far as the Canadian monthly chart is concerned. 
and of course we have the weekly and the weekly just like we've seen with the nasdaq and the s p 500 this line which is around rsi 50 still can offer support so let's say week to week if we bounce on this line and we start pointing higher then that's all it takes to stabilize and eventually potentially break out or test recent highs now if the market does break this and stays below rsi 50 on the weekly definitely that would now be a something different remember we haven't really stayed below 50 since about early 2020 so since this period here where we were below rsi 50 the market has been above 50 for the most part and even this period when it was below 50 was just a trap because it was uniform action below 50 and back above it and a trap means a reversal did take place so above 50 the bulls are in control a drop below 50 and staying below 50 invites a period similar to this period here where we had a big market move downwards so for now we can say the weekly still within the possibility of offering much needed support after the recent couple of weeks pullback by the way with about three to four minutes before the close of the session this is how your markets are looking you can see then the dow down the most about 1.4 percent we'll see how we close if we take a look at the nifty man it's so similar to that of the nasdaq and the canadian market s p 500 you can see the rsi 50 level for the nifty can still be support so yes we've got this pullback over the last couple of weeks but we haven't broken down because the rsi is coming back to test that rsi 50 level and if the rsi can hold and bounce back above and stay above rsi 50 then that sets the stage for a market to be back on a recovery mode and of course as we've already observed with other markets a break and staying below 50 is gonna invite some more aggressive selling but for now support would make a lot of sense remember on the monthly for the nifty the rsi is still above 69.1 so even the monthly is still holding well above 69.1 so this could just be a pullback with an eventual eventual down the road fresh monthly breakout if the rsi stays above 69.1 if the rsi drops below 69.1 then obviously there's gonna be more downside which by the way i should point out the emerging markets have just been sideways for a while but man they're so close to breaking this range this range here has been support around 48 for the eem and so far they've been holding this range finding support but we also have to be aware that it won't take much to break this trend line and really press things down and also we have this rsi level here which coming off the lows of 2020 there has been support on multiple tests so this area has been support and now also looks like it could potentially find support again to stabilize it there is your market close so we'll take a look at those numbers in a second but the emerging markets man um yeah sideways but very very close to breaking down of course if prices break down it would mean that this blue line would also now be broken keep in mind the blue line is around that rsi 38.2 threshold
and there is the closing numbers for December 17th, 2021. By the way, I want to go back to that nifty chart on the daily. I was talking about this line here. As being short term resistance. And this week we were unable to clear the blue line. So the blue line is a line to watch. The next time there's going to be a strong push higher, we're going to have to clear this blue line, which is simple line connecting prior lows of the daily RSI. So this connects a lot of these points. So the line is legit. We are going to need to clear this line at some point for there to be a fresh move to the upside. Right now, it is offering resistance. Also, let's not forget that where the market is trading on the daily is between a declining 50-day moving average and an upward sloping 200-day moving average. So all of these things are essentially confusing or in other words, they are suggesting that the market is in a sideways phase. By the way, this past Friday, you can see here that crude oil was down. So crude oil, USO, UNG were down about 2% plus. And if you take a look at the daily chart for USO, we see that it's got that 50 day moving average that's pointing down and is trading between an upward sloping 200 day. So 200 day again, we saw this with the nifty. Essentially, we're in a sideways market trading between those moving averages. And as I was pointing out last weekend, there's this line here where we break down. And so we can take that break and draw the uniformity line. I hope you're familiar with the uniformity concept, which is a concept by yours truly. And I believe I'm going to have some links in the description of the video explaining this concept. But you can see this is where we've been struggling in the short term. So still a market that is sideways, it's especially trading between the 50 and the 200 the moving average. Remember that the long term picture, for example, if we take a look at XLE monthly has been that this area has been resistance on the monthly. So we broke down here in 2018 and we tagged it a couple of times in 2021. The suspicion was this was always going to be a tricky area or a reversal area for the energy space. And that's exactly what we are getting here. At some point in the future, you'd want to see clearance of this line so that energy, the energy sector, crude oil can move higher. But for now, this is an area where we've been seeing resistance on the monthly chart for the XLE. And in fact, it goes way, way back to 2008. So let me just... So I'm sure some of you have not seen my analysis here, but we can see in 2008, we break down eventually here. So this is where we get the line right there. And you can see that in 2021, we've tagged this line twice. And for many months, I kept repeating that this could be an area of resistance. And it is exactly where we found that resistance just like we had resistance here in 2017 and 2018. Remember, this is the XLE. XLE, the Energy Sector ETF. And also there was a break of a trend line right here. Again, coinciding with coming off the highs in 2014. And again, crude oil, this is WTIC monthly chart going back to 1990. 
But if you take a look at the most recent years, this is where we have come and found resistance on the monthly chart and have been rejected. So this is a challenge. If crude oil is to go higher, it would have to clear this monthly resistance line at some point down the road. So I would say this is a sideways, in my opinion, sideways to down market as far as crude oil is concerned. Just like we saw with the USO on the daily, take a look at WTIC. And this is where, where we break this trend line. There's a break there. And since then, it's been where we come and tag that break point and we get pullbacks. In fact, this chart doesn't show Friday's action, but you can see this is where we closed on Thursday. And on Friday, of course, there was a 2% drop. So let me just add that there, showing resistance on the blue line again. We are also trading around the 200 day moving average. So we can say this market is eh, sideways. I don't want to say it's bearish, but I can, it doesn't at the moment have upside strength and momentum. For there to be upside momentum, it's going to have to first and foremost clear this blue line which has been resistant since about late November. On the weekly, by the way, for crude oil, if I take the lows of the RSI here and this low, we actually get an interesting viewpoint. So this week, this has turned into resistance. So we can also say that as long as the blue line is resistance on the weekly chart, then this is still a sideways to down around this area for crude oil. If crude oil is to do well and bounce and move higher, it's going to have to take out this recent weekly RSI lows line. And also, the more it stays below, remember, the more an instrument stays below RSI 50, the more it's below 50, the more you get these types of bias to the downside because of staying below RSI 50 on the weekly. And of course, again, to cure this, to correct this, the RSI needs to reclaim the level above 50. Just like we had this nice uptick from late 2020 into late 2021, you can see that the RSI on the weekly was essentially holding above 50. GLD did recover, was slightly down for the week, but recovered and is pro was 0.7%, 0.7% higher for the week. We can see that this line is still being used as RSI low support. And of course we have that top side resistance line and this market essentially has been in this range for a while, going back to about June. So this box has been where crude oil, excuse me, where GLD has been trading since June. And really, uh, I don't know which way it wants to go, it's sideways. And if we take a look at the RSI wedge, top side wedge, bottom side support, we can see that at some point what the bulls want to happen here is movement above the top side line, which is movement above this box. And bears would be encouraged if crude oil ends up breaking below the box and below the RSI wedge. So I would say that's a sideways market. Having said that this week, there was ever so slightly the potential for a break by GDX, but it has recovered by the end of the week. It looked like it was breaking this recent weekly closing low here from September. But you can see by the end of the week, it has managed to recover. So let's say right now, no harm, no foul. So we can say net net, it continues to trade in this 
range. In fact, the range goes back, you can even say the range goes back again to about June. The GDX has been trading in that range, on this range. So, until it breaks out to the upside or breaks down below the box, we can say that it is still within that sideways behavior. And now, let's take a look at the cryptos. Bitcoin trading at 46512. Ethereum trading at 3877. So we've already covered the Ethereum monthly chart earlier. And now let me go back to that monthly chart and remind you what happened at the top and the reversal of 2018, which is here. Eventually, when the RSI dropped below 69.1 for Ethereum, is when we saw that the cryptos really went into a bear market. So that's why I'm saying we continue watching Ethereum to see whether it drops below 69.1. What the bulls want is Ethereum holding above 69.1, staying above 69.1, building above it, so that the prices can ultimately, in time, stage a fresh momentum breakout. That would be the bullish scenario. A future breakout is what the bulls want to see. If Ethereum is going to trade in the 5, the 6, the 7, the 8, the 1 million price level. And those who are bearish would want to see Ethereum finally give up this area above 69.1 and drop below 69.1. When it does, if it does, expect the cryptos to go on a big drop. And especially if Ethereum still breaks below 69.1 and stays below 69.1 we can anticipate this type of a movement big price erosion remember the last time bitcoin tried to move above 69.1 was here in october it was rejected and that rejection we can see in time has led to this pullback so this change in direction in Bitcoin is because it was rejected at the RSI 69.1. And of course, this is the monthly. The last time something similar happened was here in 2018, which is this period. We also had a drop below 69.1 here, which was in, let's call it April, May. And after that, a break below 69.1, we had a big drop in BTC because it went all the way to 30,000. So, for those of us who play breakouts, this is almost very simple. Either Bitcoin breaks out again above the recent monthly, all time monthly closing high, let's call it about 61,000, 61, or let's just say 60,000 plus. A breakout is needed for Bitcoin to ignite a fresh buy signal. Otherwise, without a breakout, we have no interest in BTC or any other crypto that is not breaking out. Now, on this monthly chart for Bitcoin, let me highlight something that most of you will miss. And it is this breakout here. So this breakout was very successful since it began the most recent fantastic breakout late 2020 so this breakout here and we can take that rsi level and draw a straight line so you see that the market has bounced on this before i talked about this here and now we are back to test the blue line again so this just happens to be around that rsi 61.8 so I can say month to month, as long as Bitcoin can hold this area and turn up, then it could eventually be forming a new base for a potential new breakout attempt. And also at the same time, if Ethereum is to drop below 69.1, more than likely this is also going to break below the blue line and we're going to see a bigger correction in BTC. In other words, 
there is some hope if this line can hold on the monthly time frame. Remember last week I highlighted this RSI lows line on the weekly for BTC and really we haven't broken this line yet. So there could be some hope of support if this weekly RSI lows line holds. If it can hold, then there's a chance that we stabilize and we start building to the upside. And of course, if things can't hold and they break, then of course we are gonna have to probe lower prices for the crypto landscape. Now, net net on the daily. This chart by itself, without having any of our own opinion, this chart does suggest that net net, net net, Bitcoin is sideways to down. The reason being that we have a downward sloping 50 day moving average. And the last time we had a downward sloping 50 day moving average was this phase here. And it's only until we move above that 50 day moving average, once we recapture the 50 day moving average here, that Bitcoin had a chance to recover higher. So right now we can say we are not close to moving back above the 50 day moving average. In fact, we seem to be very close to breaking below the 200 day moving average. So net net, that's why I say net net, it looks like Bitcoin is sideways to down just based on a generic observation of where things are trading. Staying below the 200 day moving average, staying below the 200 day moving average is only going to propel people to get out of their positions because staying below the 50 day moving average, staying below the 200 day moving average. Those two things, if prices are below the moving averages, chances are people will not want to be playing BTC from a momentum standpoint and they would want to get out and re-enter at some point when Bitcoin recaptures its upside momentum. So for now, for me, the key is whether Ethereum drops below 69.1 or whether it can hold above 69.1. Below 69.1, be on the lookout for a big sell-off in the cryptos. And if Ethereum holds this current price level, and if the RSI can stay above 69.1, then the selling is going to be muted. And so it is. So be it. I am Eric with Mother.com and I leave you as I found you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. Go forth therefore rejoicing in the power and in the peace of the one creator. I do not.